Since childhood, reaching to the endless sky and space, has been a desired goal for many of us. Some of us have made paper airplanes, while others have fired small toy rockets. As the rocket you lit takes off, you feel like a famous rocketeer. As you grow older, some of us give up these ambitions, while others, continue to pursue their dreams, trying to reach greater altitudes. On this pursuit, you can find yourself in the world of model rocketry, where you deal with engineering calculations, building precise rocket parts, and launching big rockets. If you enter to the model rocketry, what should you do or shouldn't do? Welcome to Spaceship Earth. In the first episode of our two-part model rocketry series, we will discuss what amateur model rocketry is, how it's done, and what to consider when designing and building a model rocket. Model rockets are built by enthusiasts of rocketry as a hobby, or by students, studying physics and engineering fields, which they can practice their theoretical knowledge. With their standardized designs, these rockets can be launched, and then retrieved for reuse using parachutes. Some modelers have also started using the propulsive landing method that commercial rockets have been using lately. Depending on their type, these rockets can reach altitudes ranging from a few hundred meters to several kilometers. Equipped with various subsystems, model rockets can carry sophisticated technologies toward the space. They are controlled by an electronic control unit known as an avionics system. Although these systems are relatively simple in design, they work with the same principles as the rockets that carry humanity to space. They are a very good training tool for those who want to make a career on rocketry and space industry. Additionally, they can be used for conducting experiments that require short duration microgravity or simulating conditions experienced during launch. If we look at the structure of model rockets in general, this type of rocket consists of three main parts. These are the nose cone, the airframe or body tube and the engine mount. The engine mount, as the name suggests, is the propulsion unit that provides thrust for the rocket's ascent and is fired to initiate liftoff. The body tube is the longest part of the rocket and houses many subsystems. Contrary to popular belief, this section does not contain fuel like in large-scale rockets. The nose cone provides access to electronic systems or parachutes within the body tube and contributes to the rocket's aerodynamic design. Model or not, the most crucial components of any rockets are its engines. Model rocket engines operate on the same principle as rocket engines, but with lower power. Solid fuel motors are generally preferred for model rockets. You can find details about solid fuel rocket engines in the video link in the upper right corner of the screen. Model rocket engines are divided into three parts. Engine casing, this structure holds all the components together and serves as a mold for the propellant. Propellant, produces the thrust that propels the rocket upward. Nozzle, an important component that, based on its design shape, affects the burning rate of the propellant and the rocket's thrust performance. Model rocket engines are classified from A to O, depending on their thrust. Although, higher-end engines are listed as professional engines, they are used by high-level amateur rocketeers. These engines can be produced using chemicals like potassium perchlorate or aluminum powder. Unless one gains advanced experience in amateur rocketry, engines should be bought off the shelf and should not be attempted to be made at home. Since engines can be considered as a small bomb, they are seriously dangerous. For this reason, engines are not installed to the rocket until just before launch, and should be stored under appropriate conditions before assembly. Before launch, engines are installed onto the central mounting rings located along the rocket's lower body, and secured. The structure that connects the engine mount, and many other parts of the rocket is the body tube. This section contains the rocket's guidance system, parachute, and any payload it may carry. Access panels are opened on the body, to reach circuit elements that enable the activation of the subsystems, or the avionics system. Additionally, there are air evacuation holes needed to be opened on the body, both for the altitude sensors and for removing the air trapped inside during assembly. Another crucial component required for the rocket to work properly is the avionics systems. Derived from the term aviation electronics, this system is typically installed inside the body, and consists of communication devices, flight computer that keeps the rocket on track, recording systems, and necessary measurement units for navigation. Depending on the complexity and design of the rocket, these electronic systems can be integrated onto a single circuit board, or spread across multiple boards. These sensors measure altitude, speed, acceleration, position, rotation, temperature, humidity, and location data, enabling the rocket to maintain its trajectory. If a payload is carried, additional sensors are used to gather required data. Additionally, the rocket contains auxiliary systems called BMS, battery management system, that control and regulate power sources. 
off-the-shelf circuit boards containing flight computers and avionics systems can be used, or they can be custom designed and manufactured to fit the rocket's requirements and dimensions. The subsystems of the flight system, such as batteries and actuators that trigger the parachute deployment once the rocket has launched and reached its apogee, are fixed to a specialized section within the body, called a bulkhead. These bulkhead compartments are used not only for avionics systems, but also for other systems like the parachute system, to ensure organized placement and easy access. These compartments are placed inside the body, either by sliding them in on a rail, or by being screwed in from the outside when the rocket is being prepared for flight. Another crucial part on the body is the fins. These fins, which are produced and placed according to the aerodynamic structure of the rocket, help stabilize the rocket during its ascent. In basic level rockets, these structures are fixed to the body, in more complex rockets, just like in military missiles, can change direction to steer. The other component mounted on the body is the nose cone. This part is most exposed to friction during launch, and helps the rocket move through the air. The shape and design of the nose cone vary based on the rocket's intended maximum altitude and power. Moreover, it should be solid, yet lightweight to avoid disturbing the rocket's center of gravity. Launching your own rocket is rewarding. However, if you include a scientific or technological payload, your mission becomes even more exciting. A payload is generally categorized into two main types when a fee is charged. These are live payload and inanimate payload. A live payload, as the name suggests, contains living organisms like plants, insects, or small reptiles. It is examined during the launch, how the living things react in different weather, temperature, gravity or altitude conditions. Other type of payload is the inanimate payload. This category includes a wide range of items, such as air sample devices, imaging cameras, or radiation detectors. The system that will protect these payloads, and the rocket itself from falling to the ground is the recovery system. The recovery system is responsible for ensuring the rocket lands safely after launch. It contains separation systems and parachutes. The separation system is used to detach the rocket from its joints, when the desired altitude is reached. Depending on the situation, these separations can be achieved by detonating CO2 cartridges, igniting a capsule filled with gunpowder, or releasing compressed springs through various actuators. These methods are also used in similar ways in the stage separation of commercial rockets. For example, the separation process in the electron rocket is achieved by releasing tension springs. In the case of the famous Saturn V rockets, stage separation was achieved by igniting pyrotechnic explosives. After your model rocket completes the separation process, it needs to release and then deploy the parachute for a soft landing without crashing. Rocket parachutes, like all parachutes, need to be properly folded and placed in an appropriate location within the rocket so they can be released and opened at the right time. Designing and manufacturing a proper parachute and ensuring it is released at the right moment is a critical aspect. Premature or delayed release could lead to mission failure or the rocket not slowing down sufficiently and crash upon landing. However, ensuring a safe landing for your rocket doesn't solely rely on parachutes. Other recovery systems include gliding with wings or ejecting the rocket's motor to reduce weight and soften the landing can be used. Once you have designed, manufactured, and assemble the components of your rocket, the next step is to launch it. For this purpose, you need to build a suitable launch pad, according to your rocket and flight plan. The launch pad is essential for model rocketry as it ensures ignition and stability. By using the guide rails on the rocket's body, you need to position your rocket onto the sliding mechanism of the launch pad. Proper alignment is crucial. Incorrect alignment might result in the rocket not traveling in the intended direction, and likely breaking apart upon ignition. After placing your rocket on the launch pad, the next step is to set up the ignition system. The rocket engine is connected to the ignition mechanism at the last minute to prevent unintentional ignition. Depending on the type of rocket engine and igniter, the mechanism may include various systems, from a special match, to an explosive detonator, or wire heaters, which are also used in lighters. Once your rocket is ready for launch on the pad, it's time for ignition and liftoff. Your rocket will ascend into the sky as far as its power allows. After completing its mission, the rocket transitions to free, ballistic flight. Eventually, it reaches its peak altitude, apogee, and returns to you by deploying its parachute. In essence, the model rockets we described as a pursuit enjoyed by individuals, interested in the endless sky and space. While the term model might imply a hobby, the reality resembles detailed engineering work, requires careful consideration, safety measures, and discipline, just like a real orbital rocket. Spending time in this hobby, 
which demands attention and dedication, and seeing a rocket you've designed rises into the sky can be a truly gratifying experience. If you're interested in learning about how a model rocket is manufactured, tested, and where and how it can be launched, check out the second part of our video. Thank you for watching Spaceship Earth. If you found this video useful, please give a thumbs up and share. To not miss out on our videos about space and space technologies, make sure to subscribe to our channel.